it is really hard to be an African traveling Africa. I have faced a lot of challenges traveling. If you follow my channel, remember there was a time I was forced to sleep at the border uh, between Senegal and Guinea-Bissau because I was denied entry. Well, right now I'm in Zimbabwe, one country I've always wanted to visit. In fact, I wanted it to be the first country this year. Unfortunately, they were on a lockdown, so I had to cancel my plans to visit. Eventually, I was so excited that finally I'm going to visit Zimbabwe and, you know, just, you know, a lot of things we learn about, about in history and all that, you know, to just experience it and, of course, to bring you along. Well, we got to Harare, landed. Of course, I always enjoy seeing the view from above. This is what Harare looks from the sky. <music> that we went through a lot of processes um, this portal where you sign uh, you send some forms your, your COVID results they test your temperature and another place after that you go some other forms like you, you sign three forms that like you fill and sign three forms before you get to the counter for immigration <music> did all that, there was actually no queue. I guess not so many people or tourists visit this place. So after filling the form, you straight, walk straight to the immigration officer. I got there, I met a very beautiful lady. I greeted her and gave her my passport. She looked at it and told me, asked me, where are you going? I said, I wanna visit Harare. Why? I said, for tourism. I think it was hard for her to believe that someone can just visit Harare for tourism. Maybe not a lot of people actually visit this place. Maybe that is why. She said, um, where will you be staying? I showed her my address because uh, I booked some Airbnb. Uh, is this a lodge? Are you sure you're going to be staying at this lodge for three, for three weeks? I said, it's not a lodge. It is Airbnb, it's a place you book online to stay. What is the contact? In the form I'd filled all that, I said that is the contact. Uh, this person, the name of my host now, this person you've written here, uh, have you guys met before? I said, no. Okay, I guess she just didn't understand what Airbnb is and she went to talk to the colleague. But before then she had mentioned, oh, you're from Kenya? I said, yeah, I'm from Kenya. <laughs> Of course, the passport obviously shows that I'm from Kenya. She said no. Like in the first two minutes, less than two minutes of talking, she told me, no, I cannot allow you entry because you're from Kenya. I said, uh, why? Is, like what's wrong with being a Kenyan? So am I going to be denied entry for the basis of being Kenyan? Because I think for Kenyans, we get... Uh, we don't need visa to Zimbabwe, actually. Kenyans don't need visa to Zimbabwe. She said, yeah, I know that, but Kenyans apparently use Zimbabwe as a way to get to South Africa. I was like, okay, I really don't know. Kenyans out there, uh, this is new. Like, this is the first time I'm hearing this. So I really don't know that Kenyans really do that. Never heard of it. In case you've ever heard of it, just let me know in the comment section. Uh, but I said, I can definitely not do that. By the look of my passports, you can tell I'm a traveler. I've been to all these countries because actually my passport is almost full. Um, I've been to all these countries and came back. He said, but no ma, I cannot allow you in. Okay. So I stood there because now if someone has told you they cannot allow you in, what can you do? So I stood there, she, she called some other guy. The guy came, an immigration officer, and I don't know what they talked. And then the guy went away with my passport. Okay, so I showed her my passport, my other passport, because I have an old passport in this one. 
I showed her like, look, these are more countries I've visited and I came back. So it doesn't mean that just because I'm a Kenyan, I'm going to try to use dubious means to get to South Africa. She was really adamant. So at this point, I just stood there and I asked, so what or why do you think Kenyans do that? Because uh, I've never heard of that. She said, maybe Kenyans are having a tough time in their home country. Maybe people are suffering in Kenya and they're trying to go to a more developed country to get, uh, I don't know, better or to look for jobs or, you know, trying to look for greener pastures. I told her if I wanted to go to South Africa, I could go. As you can see from my passport, I have been to South Africa before because, yeah, I've been one and a half or two years ago, I visited South Africa. So if it was getting to South Africa, that wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't have to go through Zimbabwe and try and, you know, sneak myself into a country. I can just go because the process of getting a South African visa for Kenyans, it's not hard. You just need to pay about 4,500. In fact, there's no interview. You just submit it, show your bank statement and yellow fever, and there you are. I've never had any Kenyan being denied South Africa visa. Anyway, she insisted, no, ma'am, I cannot allow you in. In case you get and disappear in here, I will be in trouble. Okay, so what do you do, ma? Or maybe you're trying to go and look for opportunities in South Africa. I showed her. If Kenya, I was suffering in Kenya and I needed a more developed country. As you can see, I have a U.S. visa on my passport and it's valid. I would have then gone to the U.S. because maybe it's more developed than South Africa. That's where I would have been. But I've been there three times and came back to so. So that should give you a, at least a reason to see that I'll definitely come back. So it was just a lot of back and forth. And then she trying to talk to the colleagues, uh, her talking to the colleagues. I really don't know what they were speaking back and forth with the colleagues and all that. So I just stood there for about 30 minutes. I just got tired and told her, it's OK, ma, if I cannot be allowed to Zimbabwe, just deport me, but I'm not going to pay for the deportation flight. Just pay for it, deport me, give me a reason, just stamp me because I just don't, uh, it was just like, I was just tired. Remember I'd started this journey at four in the morning and here I am very hungry, tired and sleepy. I had not slept and I was having all this, you know, all this, I don't even know what to call it. So she took my passport and took it to some of her colleagues at her corner. She said she was taking it to her bosses and they'd be the ones who'll be deciding whether I'll be allowed entry or not. So she came back and when she came back, she was trying to talk to me and telling me I could give her small, something small. But I told her, me, I don't have anything. I only have $50 here with me, which is my transportation from the hotel, from the airport to the place I was going to stay. She was like, ma, you can just bless me with something small. So I came to realize, so the issue to me at this point was she actually, so they were trying to kind of intimidate me so I can give them something. And I think when I just told her, it's okay, you guys just deport me, I think that was it. Like, that's when she said, oh, no, you can just give us something small. I think if I was, if I tried to, like, really beg and look so desperate, like, I really needed to get into the country, they would have used that as an excuse to maybe uh, me giving them money or maybe even deny me entry. But I was very calm and are uh, very respectful and uh, of course i told them if it's not allowed if it's illegal if there's anything wrong or if there's any reason that i should be denied entry to zimbabwe okay then stop me out personally i think this is really bad especially for africans maybe a lot of africans need to visit zimbabwe so that they can believe or so that they can see that africans too can be tourists we can just visit our place because we want to visit our place it's not always people from the west and other non-africans who can be tourists africans can also be tourists a ugandan can be a tourist in nigeria a nigerian can be a tourist in ethiopia it shouldn't be just because someone is African, they cannot be tourists. So this is something or some sort of mindset that we really need to get out of our minds because it's really discouraging such experiences. When people experience such, if they're not strong, they can actually really 
you know, never consider visiting, or even if they had interest in investment, they might consider not to do that in that particular country based on this discrimination. Well, anyway, after that, I was stamped and I left the airport. So let me give you a glimpse of what I saw or what your first sight or first impressions of what you see upon landing and leaving the airport in Harare. Kindly hit the like button, share and subscribe. Where is it? Hey! <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. See? I would never. I so finally, finally. Finally, finally, yeah, it's about huh? How are you feeling? No, I didn't have a very good experience with immigration. I don't believe like I live and go back. So they were stereotyping you? No, they say maybe there is, so maybe they are just doing their job. But I'm like. Why? Like, I can't. Of course, of course, of course. But of course, they also asked for something small I didn't have. I told them I don't have. So they were trying to harass me. They were trying to hustle me. Yeah, so I give them something smaller. Oh, it was renamed. Yeah, it was renamed. It used to be Harare International Airport. Ah, oh, so it's Robert yeah, it's Mugabe just... International Airport now. Just, it was like months before. The same month he was, he left office. Oh, yeah. he's the one who did it. He's the one who did it, yeah. I see. And then, then weeks later, I left office. Oh, okay. Can you imagine? So you'll never forget him because you'll... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 